searing a steak real time with a searzall. Uh, so you have a raw steak, start the searzall and just point it down. Now let it sit right, look how close I am, very close. Let it sit there for a second until you start to see a little bit of a sizzle happen. And then you're gonna wanna move the searzall kind of almost like a welder, little circles and just move it around, <clears throat> just slowly move it around the steak to start getting uh, the searing happening. Now I want you to notice that right now it doesn't look 100% sear. It's just starting to turn color and that's what you want. You don't want to sit over one area uh, for so long that you get the finished crust on, on that one area. It's just going to take a long time and it's going to take a lot longer for you to sear. So now I'm going to start circling back uh, towards it. Now <clears throat> notice also how close I'm keeping the sears. All the wires are almost touching uh, the surface of the steak and that's really where you want to be and also notice there's a little flame coming up and that's really really okay now this steak was in the refrigerator uh, it's dead cold I didn't season it because I'm going to cook it uh, low temp for quite a quite a bit of time and I'm not going to put a hyper thick crust on it this time this is like what's called call pre-sear so I'm going to flip it right now right and I'm going to do uh, the other side. Now you don't want to put a hyper hard crust on it this time. If you wanted to put a hard crust on something, it, it would be easier if it had been a cook steak. It would sear a lot faster. Right now we're going to do about a minute and 15 seconds per side and we're going to put what I would call like a light crust, a pre-sear on it. Now, whether or not you use a searzall, no matter what technique you're going to use when you're using low temperature on a steak, I would always put a sear on it before you put it uh, into the bath to cook. And the reason is, is that it, A, it kills bacteria on the outside, and B, it really starts the flavor development such that, as you'll see later, the second sear is super fast and makes a really nice super brown color. And it's just going to take you longer on the second sear if you don't put uh, the first sear. So th this first sear, even though it takes a little bit of time, I think is really really worth it um, so you're looking with this initial sear about a minute and a, a minute and 15 seconds minute and a half per side to get this level of color which is what you want uh, I'm gonna hit the sides a little bit because those often get missed in the low temperature cooking so you see me rotating around and just getting uh, a little bit of color on the sides now um, in a minute, when we go to see the second sear, you'll see how fast the second sear happens if you, if you did a pre-sear. If you didn't do the pre-sear, it would take a little bit longer to get the level of crust that we're going to get, but, you know, th that's it. This would also be a lot faster if you did four at once. Now, I'm going to do the finished sear, the, the post-sear, after it comes out of the bath, but I'm going to do all four steaks at once to show you uh, what it's like to cook a dinner for a relatively large uh, number of people. Uh, so I was serving one steak for two people, so this is eight people. Notice again, I start in a, in a little circle, and then once it starts sizzling, I, uh, I just <clears throat> start moving it around. Uh, these were circulated in butter, so they have their own uh, little bit of fat. I didn't brush any extra fat on them. Uh, notice there's a little bit more smoke here than there was last time because uh, you know they're they're wetter with fat now, whereas they were pretty dry before. Um, also, I put pepper on them before I put them in. That's fine. It's not going to scorch too much. And you see me just going over the steak in little circles once it starts sizzling. And again, I'm not trying to get a finished crust in one pass. I'm trying to get a finished crust in two passes. All right, so here I am going over the second steak. Um, moving on to the third. By the way, underneath what, what I'm searing on here is a prototype, not the finished one, still not quite ready yet, of the steak decorator that some of you uh, who are Kickstarter backers will be getting hopefully uh, fairly soon. Um, also want you to take notice, again, <clears throat> there are some flames coming up around the bell. The, the really red part of the flame, that's from fat spitting up uh, you know, under the sears, just like it would on a grill. This is not something to worry about and it's not hurting my hand because the tilt in the sears all, the way the face is tilted means that my hand is away and those fires are going up. But there's a lot less smoke here and a lot less prep uh, in terms of heating a pan uh, than you would if you tried to do this in cast iron. I mean, think even if you had a powerful enough burner for cast iron, it would take a good long time to heat up enough pans to cook all of these steaks properly. There'd be a lot more smoke in the kitchen. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about the speed of the sears all versus a pan, you really have to factor in the preheat time of the pan. All right, so we spent about uh, two and a half minutes or so on uh, this side or two minutes on this side. So we're going <clears> to <throat> get ready to flip these steaks over and hit the second. But look at the crust there. And you see how rapidly the crust develops if you have already put a um, 
a little bit of a sear on it beforehand before you cook the steaks. And also notice again, uh, remember, keep a sears all close to the steaks and keep it moving around slowly but surely. Um, now I'm flipping these guys over. Okay. Oop, turn it around. And now we're going to hit the second side. And second side, same as the first. Uh, touching the fat there, see how it is. Going to put a little crust on the on the fat and holding still till I get a feeling that it's really searing and then I'm just moving in very small increments around the steak trying to do about half uh, you know half the the crust uh, at once because I know I'm going to do a second pass you always get a better job when you do a second pass and you keep it close most of the people I think who are uh, having issues with the sears all being too slow are just too far away from the meat if you go far away from the meat it really goes a lot slower or they're trying to get the entire crust in one pass and you don't want to get the entire crust in one pass it's going to take a lot longer and your results will not be as good i should mention that i am using stock sears all uh, from the uh, first delivery that went to kickstarter backers it's exactly the same as the one uh, that's in the second round on amazon uh, we haven't made any changes to it uh, i'm also using a stock uh, ts8000 uh, burns matic torch uh, it's set up just like it is in the instructions. So this is a completely stock setup. If you were going to use the TS4000, it would take quite a bit longer to sear these steaks. I'm also using, obviously, the larger camping size propane cylinder. Um, you, I do not recommend using uh, any other cylinder uh, for, for safety reasons and performance, really. I don't think map gas in particular uh, works any faster than um, propane does when you're using the 8,000. And so here we are. <clears throat> we have uh, completely seared four steaks for a dinner. Look at that nice crust we're getting. Completely seared uh, these guys in just about five minutes. So let um, me finish up the second pass, touch up, and then before I send them out, remember again I like to hit the sides uh, a little bit. And here we go. Four steaks, nice crust, low temperature, sears all, happy searing.